Hello everyone, this is for College of Designs and in this um, walkthrough I'm going to show you how to create bell curves in a normal distribution given um, a set of data. Here we have um, 16 values in our, um, in our data and let's presume that this is the that th these values represent the GPA for students in um, a certain university. Now 16 is a very low number and it doesn't make a good sample size. We want several hundred if not several thousand values but sometimes that's not possible. Sometimes you, um, you don't get a high response uh, value um, or just sometimes uh, you don't have the time or resources necessary to conduct a, a large-scale survey um, in order to conduct a statistical analysis and make uh, inferences about a, a large uh, population. So sometimes uh, maybe 16 is the best you can do in a short notice, uh, but still it, it's not a good number and it uh, won't always give you a normally distributed data set. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use several tools in Excel uh, that will help us um, increase uh, our data sets, our data entries, uh, so we can uh, create a normally distributed bell curve and conduct our analysis on that. Uh, the first step, of course, is to calculate our average and our standard deviation for the data set. Uh, and then Excel will ask us for uh, bin numbers. And bin numbers are those that represent the interval that you want the histogram tool to use for measuring the input data in the data analysis. Uh, so the histogram tool here, um, we have one for the original data and one with the random data uh, for, for the parameter. Uh, or within the parameters established by our data set here. And uh, we're going to compare both of them. We're going to compare both of their frequencies and we'll compare the charts that we derive from each histogram and see which one um, we're, we're better able to use in statistical analysis for a normal distribution and why that is. So let's get started here and calculate our averages. So let's put in a formula in cell B2, average, and we select the data as our arguments. And our average is 3.82. We enter in our standard deviation. And again, we select the data as our arguments and our standard deviation is 0.445. So if we did have a large data set, we could use the law of large numbers to deduce that about 68% of our data is going to fall um, within plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean. That is to say, if we were to add 0.45 to our average of 3.28 and subtract 0.45 from our average, then within that range, we'll find 68% of our data. Over here we saw some calculations take place for bin numbers and let's go through the formulas in each of the cells. Uh, the first one in C2 is B2, our, our average, times um, or minus 3 times B4, our standard deviation. Uh, what's happening here is um, that the formulas are generating the average um, and standard deviation for the original data. Uh, they're, they're looking at those values and the first one in cell C2 is generating the lower limit of the bin range. Uh, this number represents uh, ba three basic standard deviations uh, less than the average. The second formula in C3 uh, basically adds um, one standard deviation to the number calculated in, in the cell above. So we basically add one standard deviation uh, this number here to uh, this cell. And we use relative references, cell references in some cases and not in others. Uh, the reason being is we want Excel to continue shifting uh, this uh, by one for, for each cell. So we start with C2 and end up in C7 here, which means that it takes uh, C7, uh, adds it to the standard devi adds a standard deviation to it and returns the value here in C8. And this will uh, this will use for our histograms. Uh, now to create our randomly generated numbers uh, within the parameters of our, of our data, uh, you need to have the um, 
data analysis toolkit in your uh, data options and to do this you need to go to file options add-ins uh, under manage excel add-ins make sure it says excel add-ins select go and there's several options uh, solver add-in is um, the one I like uh, very, very much actually uh, there's a tutorial uh, I have uh, on solver it's uh, MS uh, solver add-in demonstration by Arcology Designs. I should uh, check it out if you ever uh, do use Solver, if you need any um, uh, helps and hints on how to use this um, add-in. But the one we need is the Analysis Tool Pack. So select this and click OK. And it's going to add it to your um, data. Go to the ribbon, cl click on Data, and it's right here in your Analysis section. Uh, click Data Analysis, Random Number Generator, click OK and we want 2,000 variables uh, for this for these purposes and um, altering the number here can either increase or decrease your accuracy uh, the accuracy of your analysis and your um, histograms and, and bell curves you want a fairly large value and Excel is pretty good at handling um, a reasonable amount of numbers uh, the number of random numbers we want per cell is one uh, we don't want a discrete distribution, we want a normal distribution for a bell curve and for our average uh, we need to enter will be calculated in, in cell B2 and for our standard deviation um, likewise random C we leave this blank and in output options select output range and type in uh, D2 click uh, enter or press OK and Excel generates the random numbers in a way that uh, on first glance doesn't appear to be very useful um, it spreads them across 2,000 columns but there's a really easy way to rotate this uh, simply control C click right below control V a drop down um, paste options will come down uh, if, if all these options don't um, show up for you. There should be a little thing on the bottom that says uh, Paste Special. Uh, click on that and this should show up and the option we want is uh, Transpose. Uh, click on that and as we can see it transposes all values that were previously in a column uh, into a row. Very convenient. Now we need to delete these uh, data fields here that we don't need anymore. The shortcut is Control Shift and Arrow Key which basically selects everything uh, either to the left, right, or up of that arrow key, depending on, on what you want. So, for example, if you want up and to the left, um, or down, um, to the right, and so on. Um, but we want all the numbers to the right here, and then press delete. Uh, again, control shift and then down, select all these numbers. And let's make them flush with everything else and now we have 2,000 randomly generated numbers within the parameters of our data set between cells um, D2 and D2001 so next we need to create our histograms again go to uh, the data tab data analysis histogram click OK our input range uh, first we'll create a histogram for the original data set and then one for the random data so here we want A2 through A17. Our bin range is the one that we calculated in field C2 all the way through C8. And our uh, click uh, output range in output options. The output range is going to be E2. Click OK. And here is the histogram for our original data. As you can see, on first glance it doesn't appear very useful at all we have several zeros and very um, low uh, values here less than 10 certainly less than 30 and definitely less than uh, several hundred or several thousand values uh, which is not what we're looking for when we're trying to create a smooth um, normally distributed data set um, that will be easy to analyze which is where the random numbers uh, come in uh, all of these random numbers comply with the behavior of our data set here and uh, let's create the histogram for this uh, again on data analysis histogram uh, this time our input range will be D2 to D2001 
2001. Our band range is the same, and our output range, uh, in this case, is G2. Click OK. And this is the histogram for the random data that we generated. As you can see, uh, it behaves in a much more predictable, um, much better way for analysis for um, uh, creating a normal distribution and a, and a bell curve. Uh, and it will certainly uh, help us out in analysis later on. But if you do use this approach, if you start out with a data set that is small, um, be sure to note in your analysis that the histogram and bell curve derived or used in your analysis is not um, it's not um, it's not come from a large data set. It comes from a randomly generated data set uh, created by Excel. And the difference being is that the um, margin of error might be a little different. Um, and it may not represent the population uh, entirely because as with any small um, sample size uh, there is a lot of variation, a lot of deviance uh, and, it, and it's not representative of the overall uh, population and if we're talking about GPA it's definitely not representative of the student body population um, we have several 3.5's um, couple of twos, uh, three eights, but this, this looks um, like it, it could be uh, skewed to the right with some high values. We have a uh, three two, three five, three eight, a couple of three sevens and three five. Um, depending on if where this uh, sample was taken and what part of the campus or, or what people were interviewed, there could be uh, a large selection bias here as well that needs to be considered. So be sure to note that um, the bell curve using is um, created um, from uh, randomly generated numbers. But what this allows us to do is to actually see that the data is indeed normally distributed because uh, if we were to use the, the data set we start out with uh, originally, that might not be the case. And let's see what we're talking about here. Let's select our values uh, for the original data uh, on the ribbon click insert and and charts click scatter and is the third option, the one that says the scatter with smooth lines. Click on that and this is what we're talking about right here. Um, we went through all this just to get um, you know, the graph of the bell curve but this is not very useful because uh, if this were indeed representative of our, pop of our population we would need to use some non-parametric tests and some different methods of, uh, of analysis because we have two peaks which is not consistent with uh, a normally distributed uh, set of data. Uh, this is where Excel comes in handy with its uh, capability to uh, generate several thousand numbers uh, very quickly. And let's see the difference between these two data sets when we uh, create the chart for this histogram. Again, click Scatter. Uh, third option, Scatter with Smooth Lines. And uh, again, you can you can change the view of the of the data or the chart in design view um, to suit your preferences. Uh, but as we can see, our original impression of the data was that it was not normally distributed. That um, there was indeed uh, a right tail skew. Um, that the, some of the values were uh, abnormally high, uh, and we see this here as well. It, it is skewed a little bit to the right. However, it is normally distributed. Uh, which is not seen here in the original data set, um, and this is the um, this is the warning of why small sample sizes are um, uh, not advisable. Is because uh, oftentimes uh, it gives us a misleading um, misleading idea about uh, the large population that we're trying to analyze. With more values, uh, our accuracy increases, uh, and we can we can mimic the behavior of a, of a larger population. So depending on uh, whether you're doing a, a mathematical model or a simulation or a hypothesis testing, uh, this comes in handy in, in a variety of ways um, for, for analyzing your data. Um, if you do have any questions or if you'd like, to, if you'd like me to um, include any other um, walkthroughs for different Excel options or for this option for if, you, if there's anything you'd like to see for normal distribution and hypothesis testing bell curves on Excel uh, don't hesitate to comment below and please don't forget to rate. Thank you this is Arcology Designs uh, signing out.